Hi everyone, welcome to this Q&A special. Basically this is, is just a live game against this guy in a cup game. He's got Team Season by which Aguero and Tevez, Bale. Quite a strong team to the Basically this game is just about... This is a really good game to watch. You can see he's got quite a few out of formation players yet. He still has 100 chem. I think the manager gave him the 100 chem. Um, probably he probably had, I think looking at the team without the manager, I think he had about 90 chem. But even then, this was just a quarter final match. Um, I'm not going to see what really happens, because it's... When you see it's 23 minutes long, you'll see why. Basically guys, I'm going to cover a lot of things in this. Um, basically q and a, a few guys have asked me to do on Twitter and Xbox Live through either f those that follow me and um, for a couple of tweets, um, direct messages, etc. And I thought, well, go for it. And the first topic is in regards to real life football. Um, a burning question just now is because a lot of YouTubers, especially, are getting this the, the Mickey in a sense that they don't seem to know their football knowledge as it were. Um, so people were asking me, who do you support, why, and what leagues do you follow kind of thing. So for the team I support is Hibernian, um, Scottish team in, in SPL or Scottish Premiership as it's now known. Um, followed in pretty much all my life. And in terms of what leagues I follow, um, well other teams that I follow, I follow Mallorca who were in the BBVA but sadly went down in the last day of the season, last last game of last season, now play in the league at Adelante, so a bit gutted there. Just to say that was the first goal came, so it was not chuffed there. But anyway, the um, I support Stoke for a British Pr Barclays Premier League team. Um, kind of followed them since they've went up, but I've also kind of briefly followed them a lot bit before they went up. But um, I've mostly now got to follow them since they've been in the Premiership. I also follow St Etienne. I've followed them for a long time, well before they've kind of the recent surge. Kind of when they were in their old, about f say seven, eight years ago when they were in that mid table slump. Um, mid, um, but now that they've came kind of back up a little bit, they'll be in. A bl uh, I'm not sure yet if they're still going to be in Europe yet because. I think, if I remember right, they played Elsberg on Thursday night, and I think it was, was that 5-3 or 3 all. I can't remember. I should kind of know that, because I kind of looked at the game a little bit. And it was quite a good game for what I watched of it. Um, in terms of other leagues, Italy, I follow Fiorentina. I've kind of just followed them all my life. Um, really enjoy supporting them. Some great players that they've had throughout the years. I kind of follow Napoli a little bit as well, but it's them and Fiorentina. Fiorentina support more than Napoli. And they're going to be really good this season, Fiorentina, with the signings that they've made. With like Callahan and... Yeah, not even Callahan, sorry. My brain, Mario Gomez, sorry. Because I think Gomez could just light up Serie A. That's my personal opinion. Callahan plays for Napoli. I should kind of know my transfers, but it's... Try to remember... That the Serie A has actually been buying a lot of players over the summer and you kind of forget who's been bought and who's not. Um, German team, it's kind of just been Dortmund, Bayern Munich. I follow Schalke a little bit as well just because of um, players like Huntelaar and f whatnot. Um, but I've, in regards to the German league as well, I've kind of followed um, when Royce and Holtby kind of played for like Mainz and brought Borussia much and glad back, so I kind of followed their careers a little bit, so good talents. Um, that's basically the big five leagues I follow, I follow like PSV and Ajax, well Ajax and PSV are my Dutch teams, um, Vitesse Arnhem were really impressed with last season when I f um, followed the Dutch league, I thought they were a really great side. I made it 1-1 one -one there guys with team of the season Bain, so I was quite chuffed, this was the Pink Slips team, this is the 11 team of the season players in the team just to let you know. So, almost an extreme nutcase team in a sense I've got for this match. Um, for 
Other leagues I follow, Belgium, I follow Standard Liège. I don't really follow them as much now. I kind of followed them up till a couple of years ago. And then they just kind of disappeared a little bit. They weren't performing to expectations and I thought this is not what I was hoping for. I thought they had the potential to be a good team for other leagues. Um, I follow... I follow Mold and Tromso in Norway. Um, really like Tromso. Really great players in that team. Um, Drag, who is a centre mid for their team. One of the guys I really like using FIFA. I've had him in countless teams over the last couple of years, and honestly, he's a really good young player. He's, I think he's about 24, 25 now, but even still, he's a really good talent. I would say, in terms of. Because the Norwegian League doesn't. Leagues like Norway and Sweden, etc., they don't get the credit they sometimes deserve, and people are starting to kind of open their eyes a little bit and realise that there's some really good young talents in this league, in these leagues. Um, another one being in Norway um, for Mole, for example, um, Magnus Ekrum or Magnus Wolf Ekrum, if you want to be precise. He went from Mole to Herevin. And I kind of feel I kind of feel that's a backward step for him because I feel Ekrum or Ekrum or how you pronounce his surname I apologise. I believe he's better than Herevin, I would say like a Vitis Arnum or one of the top four teams. I feel Herevin's a say a sixth or seventh place team. Anyways, um what was like the f- one question I got asked was, what was the first game you remember going to? And the first game I can remember going back to was a Hibernian versus Celtic, I think it was. Celtic or Rangers, I know it was one of the old firm. And I think we drew that day, drew or lost that day, I can't 100% remember. I think I was about 5 or 6 years old. And I went with my dad and my uncle and that was a really good game that day. Just enjoyed the atmosphere of going to my first game. But I'm going to enjoy more of them as I go get older. Um, greatest footballing day of my life. I got one guy. One. I'm not mentioning any Twitter names. I kind of should have, but it's my own fault. Um, I'm working this off kind of memory in a sense. So it was two and down at half time. Um, greatest f- um, footballing moment of my life that I've seen so far is. Probably, for ones I've witnessed, was it was a Scottish Cup run for Hibs. This was when Hibs in 2001 got all the way to the Scottish Cup final. Ended up getting beat to Celtic, who at the time had a really, really great side. And Hibs had, I'm trying to remember the Cup run, it was Stirling Albion, Clyde, or was it? Yes, but I think it was still an Albion, Clyde, Kilmarnock, Livingston, or Aberdeen Livingston. I can't remember off the top of my head that cup. I should, I'll maybe put it below in the comments below that cup run. But it was the Kilmarnock game, and it was a really great game to be at in terms of atmosphere from the Hibs fans, especially. And Hibs scored in the 90th minute of the match. We feared that this was going to go out of replay, but we won it 1-0 in the 90th minute from Ta- Thomas McTam McManus, and it was just a great day. Just, it was like, we went all the way down to Ayrshire to, to Rugby Park to see this game, and we'd done the whole cup run, so it was a great um, season for us to enjoy, and it was just a great game. I absolutely enjoyed it. It made my absolute day winning that game. But there's very few moments like them that you can enjoy where the atmosphere has been so, so enjoyable that it can't be beaten basically. Um, for in regards to other football, um, I've been asked what position or positions do I play well. I When I first played football in terms of like school teams etc, I've played in centre mid. So centre mid, kind of between CDM centre mid, n- not really a cam. And as I've got older, I've learned to play on the wings. I've learned to p- I've 
the team that I play for just now, which is an amateur football association team, I play right mid for the team, and I'm not the greatest, I will admit that, but I'm someone that likes to play it. The problem is I'm not the greatest when it comes to tracking back, as I find when I play FIFA. <laughs> it's like I can't, I should learn to play the positions just like I would do in real life, but in this game I'll go 3 2 down there. But, um, but nah, it's, it's a learning curve. I, I play goalkeeper when I play fives and sevens, but I play outfield and all of it's because I feel more comfortable. I think the reason I feel comfortable is because of when you're in goals in an 11s match, you have to get everything right, like your positioning, your, just your overall area in a sense, you have to be spot on. And with 5s and 7s you're in a smaller goals obviously and you can dive about, like I can dive and I'm pretty solid at it, it's just... I feel I would get caught out more than I should, and that be where I. W that's why I wouldn't play in goals. That's why I feel more happy in a right mid position. That was three three there. Um, but n for other stuff, I get been asked is in regards to football, what leagues do you follow? And I, I think I briefly touched on this earlier, but um, I follow obviously the. Barclays Premier League, I follow the Spanish, Scottish, they're my main three I properly, properly follow in terms of that I watch on the television all the time, or most of the time. Um, French, German and Italian I follow when I can, either online or, well not online, but well, online for highlights, but in terms of matches I watch them on TV and etc. But um, other leagues that I follow, um, Dutch, Belgian, touch the Russian league a little bit, MLS I touch a little bit as well, but it's about 8 to 10 leagues I follow. I'll now be adding the Liga Adelante to my collection of leagues that I follow because of Mallorca, so that's not a surprise there. Won't, won't bother me, hopefully they can go straight back up, but I doubt it. wonder what they'll be like next year as a team. Um, other questions have been asked is... Who is your favourite favorite bronze, silver and gold player and why in the game? Well, for bronze players, um, favourite bronze would be... Quite a hard one, I'm trying to think of who I like. Um, I'm not going to think of, it's not one of the usual guys, there's a centre mid that plays in the Spanish league, I'm trying to remember what the team is now, is it Mirandes? I'm sure it's Mirandes or something, and he's a centre mid. I got him in a pack for, just opening it for a laugh, well it was not a laugh, it was um, I won it, when I won the one of the cups. And so I opened it. And he came in the pack, and I thought nothing of him. But I thought we used him in a little hybrid team, and he was just amazing. Um, I don't mind his name now. That's annoying me. I can't. I can't think his name now. But um, he's one of the. He's one of the best. But for people that I can genuinely think of, that's a good player. Um, the. I'll jump on to Silvers just now. Silvers for me is El Unusi. El Unusi I love. I can play him anywhere on the pitch. Um, who's Clip? Not Who's Clip. Um, Skilljabred, I think that's how you pronounce his name. Per Siljan Skilljabred. He used to be a gold for um, Hamburg. And now he's a silver. He's like 74 silver or something. 72, 74 silver. And I'm quite shocked at that because he's a really good silver. And he was a good bronze. Uh, good gold, sorry. Um, for bronze, it's not like Benzia or anyone like that. Um, Tom Rogic of Celtic, he's a really good um, cam. I'd probably say that's up there for my bronze. Um, another good couple bronze players are um, David Wotherspoon of Hibs, he's quite good. Um, quite pacey actually. Um, for gold, I would probably say just because of how much I've used them lately, 
and how much I enjoy El Mezicoero. I'd never used them before and since I've had them in my team it's like, the m he's amazing. It's just phenomenal what he can do. I think it's in all the games I've played him and he's pretty much scored like every game he's in. It's just, he's just phenomenal. So yeah, if you get a player that can do that you've done like really well. This is a great moment, this attack. I got a free kick, I was not sure why. And I was like, in the back of the net for 4-4. Four, four. I was not expecting a free kick, and I was kind of under pressure there. And I took it well, 4-4, four, four. I was so chuffed. Nearly whistled there when I was talking, I thought that was quite impressive. Like a plane going off. But um, nah, um, for favourite informs, um, Pablo Piata, or Piatti, or how you pronounce his surname. He's, r he's a really good Young, he's still quite young, he's 24, he's been a bit injured over the last couple of years which has derailed him a little bit, but he's still a really good talent. Um, good gold in forms would be... Um, I'm trying to think of good cheap in for, um There's not many ones I like, because I don't tend to use gold in forms. Foreign was quite good earlier in the year. Um, but I can't really think of any good golden forms that I've used because I don't tend to use golden forms. They're like one out of half a dozen for me. I, I rarely use them. I tend to just stick with the normal players. I think if Aguero was an in form, I'd probably have him. I'd grab him in a heartbeat. Just to say there, guys, 4 4 after 90 minutes. I, pff I felt like I should have beat him in 90 minutes. Um, I was just shocking at the back. But um other stuff I've been asked, um in terms of FIFA um if you were given your own card, what would you give your rating and why? Um and I've done this before actually. Someone asked me this before well, I kind of done it before it asked people and I said I was probably in the sixties in terms of an overall rating. Like say between sixty and sixty-five. Um, the reason being is because I would say my sprint speed, my acceleration, and I go sweaty here, which I was a bit not chuffed at, but I thought I had to do it. But um, no, sprint speed, acceleration, agility. I would say are really going to be high. Um, balance I'm really quite high at, but it's areas like heading, um, jumping, jumping I'm actually good at, but heading I'm rubbish at heading a ball, it's like one of my worst areas in my game. Tackling I can get quite, aggr I'm not the most aggressive, I'm quite a, um, I can get a bit lazy, my work rates can be a bit off as well, weak foot, sweet um, skill moves and probably like two or three star skill moves and probably two or three star weak foot. So I'm not anything special if you want to put it that way. But um, no, it's I'd probably say I'm between 60 and 65. I think if you were to put me in terms of a true FIFA rating, I'd probably be bunged in. The f I'd probably be put in the 50s or something. Cause because for a star, I'm not like a professional footballer, so. I'm not gonna get the true stats. It'd be, be, it'd be quite cool to do though, it'd be quite interesting to see that. Have my own card put in FIFA. That'd be quite good in terms of like a FIFA YouTubers, like get your own cards and then the, the annoying thing is then you would have YouTubers with their own special cards. It's like maybe say 85 rated or something and such and such and with such stats and you'd be like, ah, it's a bit unfair. Obviously it'd be only your use or something kind of thing, like the 95 rate cards that you see. Um, 5-5 five five there, but no, I'm trying to roughly think what else I've been asked um, from other people. Because there's been quite a few things I've been asked, it's trying to remember everything that you've been asked. Um, if, if, um, I've got it, I know what I'm trying to say now, if I, um, 
if I could play for any team, who would it be and why? And like common sense right away would be Hibs because it's my own team and I'd love to play for them. Um, because and I wouldn't money wouldn't bother me or anything. I'd play for a t-shirt. That's probably when I'd get my work rates really high. I'd probably be like very sensible in terms of my attacking and defensive work rates and play accordingly. So, yeah, no, I'd play probably passionate for Hibs compared to, say, when I'd play for my livings. I know in terms of my fitness I'd have to be a lot sharper, but it's easier said than done, of course. Oh, pardon me? I'm a little really there. Um, in terms of other stuff, um, FIFA Q&A, um, what FIFA 14 stuff are you currently planning? Um, I've kind of not hoping to touch too much on FIFA 14, but I'll briefly touch on it. I've got three ideas at the moment. Um, I can't really say too much on them just now, um, but there's one is squad builder related. Um, which is going to take a long time to do. Um, well, two are squad builder related, sorry, actually. Um, I've just got to um, see what... Because I was originally thinking of doing it in FIFA 14, F13, but I thought it might not work, so I thought I'd just leave it to FIFA 14. Um, other ideas will be... I'll stick with player reviews, I'll stick with my general squad builders, so um I'm thinking doing stuff related to trading maybe because I'm quite good at my trading or I'm hoping I'm well, I'm generally quite good at trading. I'll see what see if what um quick sell prices are working out this year uh, for fourteen and see if we can get our trading balances right this year and make better money at the start of FIFA rather than come Christmas where I'm making easy money through my trading where I'm buying players for this card and selling them on for nearly not quite double but more than what they are. It's easy it's it's never easy to be honest with trading. But um so yeah guys this game is currently seven five um so it's been a long time tired game. I played pretty poor to be honest most of the game in Def- terms of defending, passing, attacking. I'm crap. I'm absolutely off on the rain. Um, when I get asked that, um, why do I always play at home? Because I try and never play away. Um, this game here I played in away only because I couldn't get a game at home. Nobody was playing me. They'd just seen the word pink slips and they were like, nah, we're not playing you. I was like, okay then. I thought, yeah, I'm going to show off a whole team of the season team for you and you're not interested. So what I'm going to do is, guys, I'm going to wrap it up there. Um, kind of blabbered on quite a bit. Mostly rubbish. So take it easy, guys. Thanks for watching. An 8-5 victory for me. If you wish to play me, more than happy to. Take it easy, guys. <laughs>